This is Dabu 7. Some rather interesting things going on earthquake-wise. Nothing massive shaking any cities, causing any damage right now. But the patterns making me say, hmm. Because as you can see here, 13 hours ago, 4.3 in Canada. Just within the past hour, this was never on the map. It was never there. Now, other sites may have tracked it, but if you're just coming over here, they didn't get the information till way later. It pops up, and coming in so late on their map here, you can see at 13 hours, just a few more hours, it's going to roll off the bottom, never to be seen again. What's interesting about this is we had a big quake, a 6.2 strike right out here on this ridge. The last video I had stated you need to watch out for more activity along these ridge lines all the way down here, which is what we're seeing now, right into the teeth of the serpent heads. And right on up the rest of the ridge here, here recently a 4.8. And we've got this 4.3 that struck over here. Don't normally see quakes like this up here, so many in this small little window of time. I will say this though. Also keeping an eye on the Azores and Canary Islands here, Iceland is expecting a volcano to blow here anytime. The activity that they're seeing at one of their volcanoes, they're saying is sure signs that there's something going on. Now, on these ridge lines, this is where we have a lot of activity. You know, on the ocean floor, this is where you can see volcanoes, coming up and everything else, magma on the move. Now, if these quakes here really start to march their way toward Iceland, it's something I would pay very close attention to, especially if they become very shallow or shallower and they make their way toward that volcano. Last time we witnessed something like that was in Africa a couple years ago. We watched the quakes march right toward a volcano. It's when I said, I guarantee you, if it hits the top of that thing, it's going to blow, and it did. And the plume shut down air traffic and everything else. You can actually see these things happening. The movement underground if you pay attention to the quake patterns. Some smaller activity up through here. Seeing nothing here. Yesterday we had a lot of smaller quakes popping up through here. What's interesting to note is all, of, all the time, just like Southern California sees a constant swarm, the Virgin Islands in Puerto Rico always has a swarm. Always. It's quiet. It's super quiet in here. It's something I'd pay attention to because there's always a swarm going on here. Ones and twos every day, constantly. There's. I can't remember the last time I came on here and did not see quakes down here of some, some sort. Just like you always see in Southern California, and for the most part, you're starting to see them all the time. Fracking related here in Oklahoma. Also talked about the big one in California from the San Andreas, how it cuts down through here, where it cuts right through here. You have the Ventura, uh, the Lion Fault. You have all these different faults connected that if one goes off, it could trigger all the rest. And the most recent quake here, offshore, one recently, San Francisco Bay, nothing major. Quiet up here, the Juan de Fuca. Up to Cascadia, very quiet, no action. Vancouver Islands out here, small quakes. And one of the more interesting things here is once again we're seeing quakes popping up just west of Yellowstone. Right on the western flanks of Yellowstone, 2.9, 8 kilometers deep. What's even more interesting is we've had one hit right at the heart of Yellowstone, right at Yellowstone Lake. You can see right there, Yellowstone National Park. I mean, you can't get no more right in the park than this. Hitting right there, and this hit at only one kilometer depth. You can see right there, Entrance Road, Yellowstone River running right through here, right on the outside of this cut. 
it's interesting because if you look at the Mississippi, Ohio, as it comes down by the New Madrid, all the smaller quakes we've been seeing there have been very shallow, up into the four range even, but they come on these cuts in the river or near them, and that's what New Madrid centers around is what we call the keyhole. It's a land land island kind of of Kentucky. I'll show that here in a second and explain that, but as you can see, we have some activity that they're actually showing, and there's constant swarms going on here. If you go over to the Yellowstone charts themselves, you can read the different the different uh, quakes all across the place, and normally they remain silent on it. But they're registering this one. Right there in Yellowstone. And real quick, I will show you what I'm talking about in terms of New Madrid. This spot right here. It is officially Kentucky, but it's not touching Kentucky. Because you have Missouri that comes down and wraps around completely, and this is Tennessee, all right here. So it is surrounded by water. It's very unique. You can see New Madrid right there. It's where it gets its name. And the, fe the feature of this, I think, has a lot to do with why the quakes, the water weight, everything else in this region, on this and the fault running right there through where a river runs. Mound City, we've seen quakes all the way up through here by Paducah, the biggest one right up here on this big bend. And then the other ones we're seeing down here off the cuts of these bends. All the way down here toward, you start to wait, make your way down toward uh, Memphis. That's what I mean when we talk about the keyhole, this unique piece of land right here associated with the New Madrid. And this is where we've been seeing some of the smaller quake activity here as well, is around these cuts in the river for what it's worth. Right now, showing quiet, but I can guarantee it was just yesterday or so we seen one in Tennessee. Next 24 hours, 48 hours, probably see some more activity, but what is concerning me I think the most here in terms of quakes is anytime you see quake activity at the heart of a super volcano, it's something to pay attention to. It's not massive, but it's very shallow. But the quietness right here, after seeing that 6.2 hit and now this going silent, it's just not something we normally see, just like this is not. So the ridge active... Other ridges connected to it, active as well. This area has gone silent. Pay attention to it because these places that are constantly swarming, it's a constant release of that energy. Every Ever so subtly. But when they stop, the energy is building. And that means that when it picks back up, it could cut loose with anywhere from a 5 to a 6. And let's just hope it doesn't ever build up enough in this area to release a seven or greater. So we've seen them hit outside of Cuba. You guys remember what happened with Haiti? We've seen them hit down here right off the coast in strange places off Brazil before. But with the big one hitting, all this activity, known places going quiet, I would watch anything going on over here. It's, it's just got my attention at the moment. And like I said, anytime these swarms go quiet, that's when the energy starts to build. And I just hope we don't see a big one let loose. A five or a six we could handle as long as no massive tsunami or damage cuts loose. And I guarantee you there will be a swarm for days after that happens. It'll get right back onto its normal track. But that's a look at the latest earthquake updates. Nothing massive globally. Seeing the same swarms you, you always see over here in the Mediterranean around Turkey and today the ring of fire a little less active than it was yesterday with the 5.4 in Afghanistan being of the greatest magnitude alright guys 
Till next time, it's been Dabu7. Make sure to tune in to Underground World News Live. 8 p.m. Eastern, Dabu77. See you guys there.